So it's 11.15. Uh, welcome to everyone joining us on uh, YouTube for the Gloucestershire County Council Q&A on the coronavirus. The session will be opened by Councillor Mark Hawthorne, the leader of the council, and he will be followed by Pete Bungard, Chief Executive, and Siobhan Farmer, the Deputy Director of Public Health. Uh, the questions that you have submitted beforehand have been grouped into topic areas uh, and these will be covered during the presentation. You'll appreciate that in light of the number of questions, it's not been possible to cover everything in detail. Uh, your comments and questions on YouTube are being monitored and we will endeavour to provide responses where we can during the session. Uh, if necessary, a more detailed response can be provided afterwards. We're expecting the session uh, to last for up to an hour. Um, so I'll now hand over to Councillor Mark Hawthorne, the leader of the council, to introduce the session. Mark. Uh, thank you, uh, Simon. And good morning to everyone watching us on our YouTube channel. Uh, this is our first opportunity, really, to answer some of your questions. And as Simon said, we're very grateful for everyone who's submitted a question so far. Uh, we will do our best to uh, group them into themes and try and provide as much detail uh, as we possibly can at this particular moment in time. Uh, before I kick off, I really want to say uh, just a couple of words of uh, thanks. Um, I want to put on record uh, my thanks, as I've done on numerous occasions, uh, to all of the key worker staff right across Gloucestershire and the amazing job that they're doing in helping to support our communities through this very difficult time. Uh, that includes the NHS, uh, council staff, both at the County Council and across all of our six districts, uh, the police, the fire service, um, and particularly all those key workers that are making sure that uh, essential services like uh, shops um, and other vital uh, frontline services are, are kept going through this very difficult time. A huge thank you to all of them and everything that they're doing. They're really making uh, Gloucestershire uh, proud. Uh, the second uh, set of thanks I want to do is for everyone who's helped so far in that community effort that we've had over 3000 people come forward on our uh, here to help community hub. Uh, every single one of those uh, offers of help that have, have come through, we try to deploy to an area of need within our community. And it, without that, we really couldn't have achieved everything that we've achieved over the last uh, month and a half. Uh, the final thanks I want to really put on record is thanks to every single resident in, in Gloucestershire. Um, I have been overwhelmed by the response from the community, but also by the way that people have kept to the, uh, the, the three very basic uh, uh, rules that we have in place. So stay home, uh, protect the NHS and save lives. So I just want to thank you for everything that you and your families are doing uh, during this very difficult time. It's your efforts are making a huge difference uh, on the ground. Right, as Simon said, um, we've had loads of questions uh, come forward uh, this morning. Um, we will try and uh, provide as much detail as possible. We are going to do them uh, in the th themes that they were submitted. So uh, we're not going to take individual questions, but the, the themes that were submitted um, through the, the, the questions that were submitted beforehand. Um, and to that end, I'm now going to invite the, the Chief Executive um, of the uh, County Council, Pete Bungard, to address some of those uh, themes, specifically on the economy and the County Council, but on some of those uh, questions that submitted. So, uh, Pete, over to you. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, can I uh, well, say good morning? And I would add my thanks to everyone who's um, the key workers, the community, and the residents. So I've got about seven or eight themes from the questions. Um, as Mark said, I can't cover everything. We've had sort of 60, 70 questions. But um, the first one I want to start with is how are we supporting businesses? Now, the government's role, I think, is to directly support individual businesses. Um, and we've seen them step up to that role at various points. Um, business rates were cancelled, uh, small business grants were issued, um, guaranteed loans, uh, the furlough system and the promise of no cliff edge. Uh, they also released an extra 5% for those who weren't quite eligible and that can be uh, sorted locally. Um, they provided self-employed support uh, and our local enterprise partnership has taken on the role of signposting 
people to all of those means of support. So coming around to our job, um, I'm really keen that it's a, a team effort of the county council, uh, our seven district council, our six district councils, and our local enterprise partnership as a single combined effort, not sort of competing in this space. We've had some talks about this. We think we can put together a um, pot, a recovery pot of several million pounds if we prioritise this. And what else would we prioritise in terms of the economy at the moment? Um, but the way in which we are likely to provide support will be identifying those sectors that are ready now to um, be accelerated and, re and uh, play a stronger role and need support, I don't think we will be able to work at an individual business level. Now, tourism would be an obvious sector for a campaign approach. Um, and yeah, this will be about you know, it, it, various parts of the county uh, being ready for that. So I think to summarize that, Sector support is the way we anticipate our recovery working. We do not think we can work at an individual business level. The next collection of questions were on household waste and recycling centres. So I'm going to again start with a thanks. I think our district councils have done a great job at keeping as much as possible of waste collection going, uh, despite losing parts of their workforce through self-isolating and some cases. Um, I think really we only lost two district councils which couldn't do green recycling for a number of weeks. But we know both of those, one of those has restarted, Tewkesbury, and I understand that Cotswolds will restart uh, next Wednesday. So the issue we've had lots of questions on is household waste recycling centres. We've got five of them in the county. Um, they shut with the lockdown because um, the journeys to a uh, a tip were not seen to be an essential journey. Um, DEFRA and various ministers have encouraged us to reopen them for hazardous to household items. Now, to be honest, uh, your hazardous waste is my affectionate collection of junk in the corner. Um, but uh, we will be starting to reopen recycling centres. It will start on next Monday, the 11th of May. Uh, it will start with two, Hempstead and Wingmore. There will be a booking system. Um, we, you know, there is an absolute risk we could have queues uh, for a mile long as people you know, find this opportunity uh, to take a trip to the tip. We can't accommodate that on day one. We will get back to a normal service, but we will need help from the community to, uh, yeah, if it really is uh, you know, a hazard to keep this stuff at home, then you're an absolute legitimate customer. We will be looking, if possible, to open the three smaller sites, uh, one in the Cotswolds, one in Stroud, one in the Forest, about a week later. But we'll make plenty of press announcements on this. I think I've said enough on that. Um, We've had a lot of questions around transport activity, uh, footpaths, cycle lanes, um, traffic levels, air pollution. I'll just start with traffic levels. Um, as, as you'll notice looking out the window, um, traffic levels dropped dramatically with lockdown. Overall traffic levels went down to about 34% of normal and HGV traffic went down to about 45%. And this is as measured on the county's roads. As a cyclist, it's been wonderful. So, you know, my exercise for the days I can get out would be cycling and it, it's been great. Um, I know lots of the questioners would love to capture the situation we got at the moment where um, air pollution is down Traffic congestion is non-existent and our roads are back to probably traffic levels of the 1960s. Um, to do that, we'd have to stop the economy where it is now. And to be honest, you know, we can't do that. Um, so we're not going to be able to stop traffic returning to something like its normal levels um, as lockdown 
is gradually released and the economy restarts. I can say as an employer, Gloucestershire County Council has achieved well over 50% remote working and we're determined to capture that, that for the future so our own green footprint will reduce. We've got a climate change manifesto, which as soon as we can get on back on the task, we will. But I can't promise that we can keep traffic levels down to something below what they've been in the past. Um, we've we've been we on, on cycling. We've been asked to can we have some pop up cycle lanes? Um, we do not have plans for that at the moment. We do have plenty of cycling improvements in our existing capital program, and we've still got staff working on delivering those. One of those is a great scheme that'll see huge improvements on the corridor from Cheltenham to Gloucester. Um, the area where I, I think the debate is open is around pavements. Now, there are 4,000 kilometres of pavements in Gloucestershire, and on the vast majority of those, people are perfectly capable of achieving social distancing if they are out walking. But there are a few locations, and I think they've been identified by the question by the questions we've been asked, where um, a successful shopping area is alongside a busy road. Um, I think there is a case to have conversations with our district councils, identifying if we can do something to make the pavement capacity um, bigger and safer in those locations. And that's a conversation we'd like to kick off fairly soon. Uh, it particularly, of course, matters if some of the announcements uh, by the Prime Minister on Sunday uh, starts to see any of the shops opening other than the current food shops. Um, if there are other solutions, we're very interested to, to learn from that. We've been asking questions about the impact of COVID-19 on the County Council staff. So thank you for asking. I suspect it was a staff member that might have asked. Um, today, only a handful of our staff actually have COVID symptoms, which I'm incredibly grateful for. Um, Self-isolation and a few service closures mean that in total, about 4% of our workforce are not working for something relating to COVID. And if you add in other sickness, we get up to about the 7% absence rate. Yeah, that is not a great strain on us carrying out uh, our normal roles. I've got to say, tragically, and quite early on, we lost one of our members of staff, members of staff to COVID. Um, he was a manager uh, in our adult social care teams, and uh, it's incredibly distressing when we lose somebody we know. We have supported remote working for over 2,000 of our colleagues, so we have a total staff workforce of about 3,800, and over 2,000 of those every day are remote working, mainly at home. Uh, about 900 of our staff are um, attending their normal workplace. The vast majority of those will be social care and fire. Uh, we have some staff reallocated for our COVID response. Um, with lots of people working from home for the first time, we've carried out an, a survey um, of our staff. Um, we had 1,500 responses and I've got to say, it reads quite positively. Over 80% feel well supported, um, but we will keep running this survey um, on how, how you feel working remotely. We know that for some people, there are difficulties. It might be, frankly, loneliness. It might be about, um, it's actually very difficult to find space at home to uh, actually work. So we're working on those. Um, the bottom line is, um, this is a major step for us in terms of remote working and hence our carbon footprint in terms of travel. And we want to capture as much as that for the future as we possibly can. We've been asked about the impact on the council's budget. Um, so we have had some significant additional costs uh, in the millions. 
Um, one of those is we have invested, um, along with much of the country, in an uplift for the social care sector. The real issue is we we um, you know, wage levels were going up in retail and um, in in uh, supermarkets. Uh, we do need to keep a workforce in place looking after our most vulnerable people. So there's been a ten percent increase in in um, uh, payments for care, uh, care whether that's um, a care home or a uh, home visit. We've purchased a lot of uh, PPE equipment. We've lost some income, things like um, parking. Um, we suspect we will have a drop in our council tax receipts. Uh, we've invested quite heavily in new ICT kit um, and some of our savings plans won't happen. If you add them all together and look for the, the current year, 2020-21, we think the bill will be at least £38 million. It could be more. We're learning every day. The government has already given us, um, in two blocks of money, £27 million towards that. So, um, yeah, there is some uncertainty that our total bill for the year um, is very significant, but so is the level of government support so far. Um, if we continue to get that government support, um, I'm feeling relatively confident. I would also add that our district colleagues have received um, over £6 million between them. We were asked about the impact on the uh, pension fund. Now, the county council runs a pension fund for about a 100 different public sector bodies um, in the county. Um, it's a very large fund. Um, I, I can't remember what it amounts to. It's over a billion pounds. Um, it is valued every three years. At the last valuation, it was 100% funded. Now, for a pension fund to be full and capable of meeting its commitments is actually rather unusual. And to be honest, the Gloucestershire Fund hadn't been there for some years. So we're starting from quite a good position. We have seen the FTSE index drop about 30%. Um, very early, uh, that was back in uh, March, but we've seen about a 10% recovery. Um, so um, we, yeah, we don't really know where those investments will end up in, in the next year. But to be honest, a pension fund is about long-term investments of a wide variety uh, of types. And we will just wait the next uh, three yearly valuation to see where that leaves us. If I'm honest, I'd be surprised if we're in a weaker position than we've been, say, four or five years ago when we've had other drops in the value of shares. The last one I was going to cover before I ask um, our Deputy Director of Public Health to come in was um, questions around the future resilience of Gloucestershire. Now, I think we've had a pretty good um, reputation of, uh, regarding handling emergencies of any sort. Um, that reputation really springs from uh, the 2007 floods where um, council, um, the whole uh, emergency response system across police, fire, health, um, actually had a fantastic um, capability back then. I think we've managed to retain that um, and we are working very well within the council and with our local resilience forum partners. As Mark's pointed out in his thanks, um, community resilience has also been fantastic. Um, from a very simple online initially and then a telephone line, um, we were we managed to get something over three and a half thousand offers of support coming in over a period of less than a fortnight. We actually have more offers of people willing to help anyone um, challenged in the community um, than we actually have requests for help. So, um, yeah, I think we actually have a very resilient county to start with. The County Council um, immediately put 300,000 into supporting um, community groups uh, when the lockdown started. Uh, and I think that money is being spent wisely. 
Um, in terms of future resilience, um, we will, as I've said already, we will try and retain our uh, agility in terms of remote working. Um, the test of any emergency is not just how you manage your response, but how you manage recovery. We've been thinking about that since um, mid-March. Um, we will be resetting every one of our services to think about um, you know, from what we've learned, how would we run it slightly differently and how do we capture um, the uh, different ways of working that are possible. And we will play our part in the economic recovery of Gloucestershire. I'm going to stop there. Um, I think Siobhan will cover um, a number of public health and care related questions. So uh, that's me finished for now. Thanks, Pete. Um, so, I, as Pete said, I'm going to cover um, a variety of different areas. There were some specific questions that we um, will try to address uh, through the, the key themes I'm covering. Um, but just before I started, I also wanted to say, uh, as both Pete and Mark have, my sincere thanks as well to everybody in the county. I only moved here in January to come and join Gloucestershire County Council. Um, and I moved into um, Cheltenham in um, uh, in March, about a week before the lockdown, and I have been so touched and overwhelmed by the community spirit and the groups out there that are supporting everybody across the county. Um, and our partnerships are absolutely excellent. Um, so it's an absolute delight to come and join this county at a time when I think people are trying to make a real difference. So, so thank you to everybody involved in the response. Um, to just to start then, I think we're going to have a look, um, if Simon can queue up the slides for us, just a couple of um, graphs talking about the cases and deaths in the area, because we know that there's been a lot of interest uh, from the media around this. Um, I do want to start there with a bit of a note of caution, and um, there's a lot of information out there, um, and some of it's misinformation, so I think it's really important when people are thinking about um, how to take their information from the press, they do check, it's from re repeatable sources, trusted places like Public Health England and NHS England, and we are aware of um, some uh, misinformation in the local community, um, so it is important people do check out those sources. The other thing to say just before we go on to the graphs is that um, it's there's a lot of information out there and um, it's available from Public Health England, the Office of National Statistics, the Care Quality Commission, um, NHS England, um, and it's hard to make sense of all of that, that data. And also, I know we're being asked to share quite a lot of data, but it's important to remember that sometimes the data we hold in the council is incredibly sensitive and could identify people and their families. So we need to make sure we're, we're abiding by all legislation when we're thinking about what we share with the public. So hopefully today we'll give you a bit of a picture of, of where we're at in the county. So we'll start with the cases. Um, as of yesterday, um, NHS England were reporting that there was um, 1,000, sorry, Public Health England were reporting there was 1,268 cases uh, confirmed of COVID-19 in Gloucestershire, and that's since the pandemic began. Um, they are based on daily reports of all cases that are being tested in our hospitals and our community. But it is worth noting that the tests in the community are quite low at the moment that makes it quite hard to then compare across areas. So it depends on how many people are going to hospital, how many people are being tested in the community, but also things like we know that older people are more likely to catch COVID-19. Um, so it will depend on the age, um, people who have got comorbidities, so things like heart disease or diabetes might be more prone to catching COVID-19. So it, it depends on the health profile of the areas as well. So we need to think about it in context of the wider um, population that we have in the county. So, um, and that's why that note on the bottom of the slide there talks about we are um, quite high compared to our neighbours in the southwest, and we'll show you some figures on that in a second. Um, but if we take it into account in terms of our next door neighbours, so places like Worcestershire and Herefordshire um, and Warwickshire, we, we actually don't um, we don't stand out quite so much. So I think it is thinking about how the pandemic might have spread and how people do travel around the country. Okay, so if you can go to the next slide, please, Simon, I can talk about the um, graphs. 
So this is data provided to us by Public Health England. Um, and, um, and this is looking at our statistical neighbours. So our statistical neighbours are counties that are of a similar size and um, demographic to us. They've got a similar age profile, similar population. Um, but you can see they're spread all over the country. So you can see we've got Lancashire on there um, right the way down to Somerset. Um, and the graph shows that um, this is data up until the 26th of April and this is for confirmed cases. Um, so you can see that we, um, per... Um, 100,000 population, so for every 100,000 people we have in the county, there was around about 175 cases. Um, and that you can see compares um, reasonably well to some of our other statistical neighbours. Um, but obviously we are much higher when we do look at our southwest neighbours, as I said before. So Somerset, Devon um, are much lower than us. And again, that might be to do with how the population is structured around there. They live further apart. It's more rural. Um, and it also could, do, could, could be to do with our neighbours having slightly more cases as well. The graph on the right shows you that spread over time. Um, and again, Gloucester there, Gloucestershire is the um, dashed black line. I know it might be hard to see on the slides, um, but we're sort of in the middle of that cluster of uh, lines and following, as you can see, very much the trend of other areas. So there's some reassurance there in knowing that um, although we might have slightly higher spread, we, we aren't um, seeing any unusual patterns that would surprise us. Okay, um, I do want to say, so if we looked at the cases, we said we had 1,268 in Gloucestershire as of yesterday. Um, and if you do compare us to Worcester um, and Warwickshire, so Worcester had um, one, uh, 1,207 and Warwickshire had 1,255. So um, I, get, I guess that does make the point that we are quite similar when we look at our next door counties. If we can move on to the uh, next one, Simon, and while you're doing that, just to say a note on the districts. Um, I know there'll be a lot of interest about how the districts split down, um, but in terms of that Public Health England data, we're showing, although there are some small numbers of differences in total cases, um, there isn't actually um, any statistical difference. And by a statistical difference, we mean um, a difference that we can't be sure is just due to chance. Um, so because we are dealing with such small numbers, it's hard to know what's really going on. So what we're saying is we think the districts are showing roughly the same pattern of infection. OK, so if we move on to the deaths data, um, it, it is obviously um, uh, really tragic that we're losing so many of our uh, neighbours, friends and, as Pete said before, colleagues uh, to, to COVID-19. Um, we do know that um, NHS England report each day the total number of people who died in hospitals. Um, and as of yesterday, that total in Gloucestershire was 174. But that doesn't include those deaths in the community. Um, and that's the data that the Office of National Statistics have started to publish. That data comes from the death certificates that we have. Um, so every time somebody passes away, their details are registered and that goes to the Office of National Statistics. They then process the data and release it back out to us. And we're able to then look at it um, and compare ourselves to see um, what the situation is locally. We um, do have, um, again, so if we, we take into the account the things we said before about us being more similar to the um, next door geographical neighbours than we are to our statistical neighbours. If we look then at our geographical neighbours for deaths, again, you can see a similar picture. So um, although Bristol is a lot lower, that might be an indication of the fact that their population is a little bit younger than ours. But if you compare us to sort of Warwickshire and Worcestershire and Monmouthshire, you can see we're having a very similar number of deaths per 100,000 population. Um, we are unfortunately higher than England, um, but I think that that does reflect again that, that difference in how the disease spreads around the country. Um, I think the other thing to say about the deaths is um, we did have a specific question about the ONS data on um, middle super output areas, so that's MSOA level data. They're um, kind of units of geography that the Office of National Statistics use to compare um, small areas. Um, they're sort of bigger than a, um, a, a councillor's ward area, so they're probably about 8,000 people in an area. Um, but all we get is the same as the public can see on their website, which is how many are in each area. We don't know anything about the breakdown of those deaths or where they occurred. There was a question asking if um, the Alston and St Mark's MSOA area was that due to care home deaths. And unfortunately, at this stage, we can't tell you that. Um, but we note that it's a really important question to understand. Uh, and we'll work with our um, partners to look at the data we have. We can also request further information from the Office of National Statistics.
So I think that's the death data um, covered. Um, I think we finished with the slides, Simon, so thank you. So we've just moved on then to things about inequality. So I know there's been a lot of headlines around how um, the deaths disproportionately perhaps affect people in um, more deprived communities. So we don't have very much data on that locally at the moment, um, but we are looking at how we can find out more. So we're asking Public Health England to share um, some data with us on where our cases are from, so we can have a look at that trend locally. Um, and we are also um, obviously very much aware of the um, Black and Minority, uh, Black, Asian and Minority ethnic group research is, that's going on nationally at the moment. So we do know there's an emerging UK picture and an international picture that those groups might be more susceptible to COVID-19 infection and, and indeed death. Um, and we do have some anecdotal evidence locally that that, that might be being borne out in Gloucestershire. And Public Health England are doing a rapid review at the moment, so we're keeping a close eye on that evidence and trying to react to what um, that evidence is showing us in terms of how we can support those communities. Um, some of the things we've been doing is working with NHS partners uh, to understand how they're supporting their staff um, and also looking at how we support our staff in the council. Um, the national data doesn't, from the Office of National Statistics, doesn't really have a good ethnicity breakdown. Um, and um, it's not always recorded in the things that we do. So one of the things I know the uh, NHS Trust have been doing is to make sure that they do record ethnicity when patients are admitted to hospital. Uh, and that will obviously help with this analysis. Um, and the, we've been trying to reach out to some groups uh, who might be able to support uh, the BAME community um, as we find out this greater information. Um, there's also several groups set up uh, in the county. So we've got a community resilience group, a homelessness group, um, and um, and I'm sure we'll talk at some point about the recovery and how we will return to some kind of normality in the county. Um, and that group will also look at the impact on um, different populations um, and how the inequalities are panning out across the county and uh, BAME will be part of that. Um, within the council, we will make sure that any staff that do need advice can get support through occupational health. So I hope that covers that uh, BAME question. Um, another question in terms of vulnerable groups um, and specific inequalities was around learning disabilities. And I think that's an absolutely fantastic question to ask and really right to raise it. Um, but again, we're suffering from a bit of data, um, a lack of data on, on those individuals. Um, at the moment, what we can tell you is that we have several um, supported living um, uh, settings where um, people with learning disabilities would live. Um, and although we know there's been some cases in those areas, um, there hasn't actually been any deaths. So that's really reassuring. But if anybody had learning disabilities and was, say, admitted to hospital uh, and passed away, we wouldn't yet know that information. Um, we hope in the fullness of time that will be um, released to us and we'll be able to understand that better. Um, and we take it as a really valuable reminder that we need to make sure we look at that group when we're um, understanding how this is impacted on our community. So I think that's it on um, the uh, inequalities data. So if I move on to talking about testing. Um, the testing situation for COVID-19 is changing rapidly. Originally, we were only testing people who'd returned from certain countries when, when they travelled. We then moved to dropping that community testing and only testing everybody moving into a hospital setting um, in order that we could understand how we could treat them better because if they had COVID-19, that would allow us to make sure we put in certain uh, treatments to speed up or help their recovery. Um, as the testing capacity has increased, and you'll all be aware of the government drive to increase testing capacity, that's been able to roll out even further. And we've been really, really lucky to have a frontline NHS staff testing centre at the Edward Jenner Court um, Gloucestershire Health and Care uh, Trust in Brockworth. Um, and there's 160 slots there for our frontline NHS staff. Um, and the team there has also been really um, supportive in extending that to our social care teams across the county. So care home workers, children, social care, etc. And more recently, allowing people like the fire service to get tested there so that we can get our key frontline workers who keep the population safe um, tested and make sure they can get back to work as soon as they can. That does then mean that there's a, a variety of other people now the government say can be tested. There's a government website that uh, we've um, shared on our um, Gloucestershire County Council website. Um, or if you were to just Google um, essential worker testing, it will come up. 
Um, and they are, um, as I said, frontline NHS staff, social care staff, but also we now are including anybody who can't work from home who has symptoms of COVID-19, all over 65s who have symptoms, and also anybody in those groups that we've talked about but um, doesn't have symptoms themselves, but is living with somebody else who does have symptoms. Um, and the reason for that is that if you are living with somebody else who has symptoms, you have to self-isolate for 14 days. So if we can get the person in the household tested and they test negative, that means you can actually go back to work. So that's who can be tested. Um, you need to be tested within the first three to five days of those symptoms appearing. And um, that's because the test needs to um, um, find the virus and the virus still needs to be in your system. Um, and the question about where, so I've mentioned the Brockwood site, which is for our frontline NHS and social care staff, um, but there are also regional testing centres. Our nearest two are in Bristol and Worcester at the moment, although we are working really hard to try and get uh, one of those regional testing centres located in the county. But we've been able to secure from the Department of Health and Social Care a military run site which is um, actually at the Oxtells Tennis Centre in Gloucester for the next five days. So if anybody's watching that feels they need a test currently, um, if you log on to that government website, you can actually self-refer yourself um, as of today. And the, the um, testing unit will be there for the next four days. We've also expressed a strong um, desire for that unit to come back again in the next couple of weeks, although we'll need to look at the locations for that. I think the other thing to say is that if you are working uh, for any organisation and you think you need a test, it's always worth checking with your employer because they can also refer you via the government route or tell you of um, any quicker access that you might have locally. And um, we did have a specific question there about um, a sitter um, and a sitter is somebody who supports a caring organisation by going in and giving uh, the carers respite. And um, there was a question about whether or not they could get a test. And the answer is because they can't do their job from home. If they were to go onto the government website, they could indeed um, ask for one of those um, uh, tests at the local uh, Gloucestershire um, mobile testing unit over the next five days so if the person who submitted to that question is watching I'd strongly recommend you get onto the website as soon as possible and try and get yourself registered for a test okay so just last couple of minutes then looking at care homes I know there's been a lot of interest around um, them uh, across the county um, and nationally and um, we did say before I did say before that the original deaths data was only looking at um, hospital deaths and the ONS data does give us that more complete picture um, and unfortunately, it does show that we have had a, a lot of deaths in the county in our care homes. Um, it's difficult to know exactly how many of those are um, contributed to by COVID-19 because we're not testing everybody in those settings. But the doctors are able to make an assessment when somebody dies of what the likely cause of death is. And the Office of National Statistics data does recognise that. So, um, and um, care homes are also told to notify the Care Quality Commission or CQC uh, when they have had deaths. And we've got data from the CQC up until the 1st of May. And we know that since the pandemic began, there's been 270 deaths in care homes uh, across Gloucestershire. Um, but we do think only around half of those were COVID-19 related. Um, however, clearly that's um, 145 deaths that wouldn't have happened if it hadn't have been for the pandemic. So we're extremely concerned by this. Um, we've also been looking at data from Public Health England about how many care homes we think um, have told them that they have COVID-19 cases. And we believe that's around 30 percent of our care homes at the moment. Um, but it is worth saying that we do have a lot of care homes in the county. So sometimes our statistics look really um, quite high. But we do, as I say, have quite a high proportion of care homes. And also um, we do know that we offer a really good service. And so our care homes are very popular for people from out of the area to place their relatives inside. So it's really important to remember that, you know, these are people's homes um, and that we've got really good staff working with these people to try and support them and prevent them from getting infection. Uh, one of the key ways that the um, care homes can prevent infection, of course, is PPE, personal protective equipment. Um, and just to reassure you, the stocks are good. The care homes are all working with us and are able to access a, um, extra support from the local resilience forum and the county council if they're running out of supplies. Um, and at the moment, um, that's working really, really well. 
Um, so just to finish on that, to say there's really hard work going on by uh, all of our partners, the County Council, um, the CCG, the NHS partners, and we've got a multi-agency group who are offering the care home support. And on a weekly basis, they go through each of the care homes uh, in the county and talk about how they can offer more support, how many cases the care homes had and what else they can do to help and if they've got enough PPE supplies. So there's really, really um, strong work going on behind the scenes. Um, I think the other thing to mention is that um, the workforce themselves are incredibly valued, um, are going above and beyond what we would ever normally expect of people working in this setting. Um, and I know that we really value everything they do. Um, so I think it, it, you know, that's a, a good note to finish on. I think just before I hand back over, I understand there was a question specifically around um, the uh, impact of um, air pollution on COVID-19 um, and whether or not there was a, a confirmed link between um, the rates of COVID-19 and air pollution. So we're not aware of that evidence at the moment, but we recognise that the, the picture is changing daily. And I think it comes back to making sure that when we um, make policy locally and we introduce things to support people, that that's done on the best evidence we have available. So we will take that away and look at it. Um, but at this stage, we, we um, aren't aware of a, a strong link. I hope that answers the question. Uh, so if I hand back to, um, I think, is it Mark now? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for that. Hopefully you can uh, see me still on um, the, the YouTube uh, channel. Um, can I just thank um, both uh, Siobhan and Pete for uh, their updates and uh, hopefully you found the insight and information uh, that they've given you uh, very useful. As I said, we had lots and lots of questions in and we're trying to cover all the topics off um, as much as we possibly can. Um, I am aware that some people have been struggling to uh, leave comments on the YouTube channel. Uh, don't worry, if you leave a, a comment on there or if you email a comment to, to us, uh, we will update our frequently asked questions uh, section as part of uh, the County Council's uh, website. So it's worth visiting there where you can get lots of lots of information from questions that not only been asked today, but have been asked over the uh, number of weeks uh, that this is uh, been going on. So uh, we're updating uh, yourself with the information that's on there and it's a really useful resource for anyone who wants to learn more about what's going on uh, here in uh, Gloucestershire. Um, bear with me, I'm, I'm checking numerous screens as they come in, um, but um, I think we've pretty much covered off all of the comments um, that have come in so far and I just wanted to touch base on a, a couple of issues uh, before we leave you uh, today. Uh, firstly, um, on testing. Um, and uh, thank you, Sean, for that update on where we are on uh, testing. Um, really, really important. Um, if you think um, you are uh, 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 will qualify for a test, to go to the government website. Uh, you can register for one of the tests uh, on the Oxall site uh, from there. Um, so really important you go there and uh, make sure we utilise uh, that testing solution uh, for Gloucestershire. We're working really, really hard at the moment to try and get a permanent testing solution uh, for the county, but we're very grateful that we got uh, the army come in uh, this week with the mobile testing unit. And uh, I know now lots of people are booked in for uh, tests uh, today. And what I would, would say is if you're booking for a test, go for a test. Um, one of the issues we've seen come from other parts of the country are the number of people who book in and then don't turn up. So it's really important if you're going to uh, do that, then uh, uh, make sure that you go uh, for there as well. Uh, comment as well with regards to people maybe not being able to drive to the Oxtall site. Um, again, go to the, the government website. You may be able to get a home testing kit uh, as part of that as well. Um, so again, really is your first port of call to go there and make sure that you've got all the information that you need. Um, and you can get uh, lots of your questions uh, asked uh, there as well. Um, question on care home testing as well. That's That has been going on uh, for some time. So where a care home um, has uh, a number of residences or COVID-19, uh, there is a, a test that's sent out to uh, test those individuals. Um, but again, if any staff um, in care homes um, have any um, questions or concerns around testing uh, in Gloucestershire, then uh, contact us at the County Council and we can help answer any questions or concerns that you may have. Um, and equally, um, those um, you talk to your line manager because there will be a number of ways that they can input uh, into um, uh, Gloucestershire County Council through uh, public health or through social care. So really important that uh, you do uh, that. 
The second thing um, I just wanted to pick up on is obviously we're expecting an announcement from the government this weekend about easing of the lockdown. Um, really important that residents uh, pay attention to what the announcement will be. We'll be issuing more information and guidance next week as we understand uh, what it is that, that will mean for Gloucestershire and Gloucestershire residents. Uh, one of the things that we talked about already um, is uh, the reopening of household recycling uh, centres. So as Pete said, there are two recycling centres opening from Monday, uh, the Hempstead one and the, the Wingmore one. Um, those will be on a booking basis. So if you want to come along, uh, please go to our website and uh, book uh, a slot. Um, don't turn up because you will be turned away. This is about making sure that we don't get excess number of people on site and that we can't therefore ensure social distancing is taking place. And that's as much to protect you, uh, the public, as it is to protect our staff as well. So it's very, very important you adhere to those rules. Uh, we're looking to open the uh, as many of the other household recycling sites um, about a week later. So again, uh, bear with us uh, and keep uh, an eye on our website and our Twitter feed for any further updates that you might uh, have on uh, that. The final point um, I wanted to uh, really uh, pick up on as well um, is the economy. Uh, Pete mentioned uh, some of the support that's already available for businesses, and we would urge businesses uh, to use the, the local enterprise partnership to make contact with their local district councils about the support uh, that they can get uh, there. And I know there's a huge amount of work that's already been done by our district colleagues, and I really want to thank them for uh, all that they've done to support businesses uh, across uh, the county. Um, our priority uh, going forward will be to, to work collectively together at district, at county level with the local enterprise partnership to help support Gloucestershire's economy uh, recover from the lockdown. And our, our priority will really be to make sure that we get businesses back up and running and that we get people back into work and protect the jobs that we can protect and help sure that we protect people's economies um, and livelihoods. So that will be the priority that we'll be really focused on over the coming months um, and it's really important we all collectively work together uh, to that uh, end. Um, I hope you found this really really useful. Uh, I don't know whether uh, Pete or Siobhan have got anything else they want to add uh, to uh, other comments or questions that come in. I'm seeing that nods of no um, from uh, both there so I hope you found this really really useful. Um, again we will try and share as much information as we possibly can Go to our website where you can find lots more about our frequently asked questions. Follow our Twitter feed where we'll be making uh, announcements as things change over the coming days and weeks as the government makes announcements with regards to the lockdown. Um, but the final message I just want to uh, leave with you all uh, today is to thank you for all that you're doing um, in, in your families, in your communities. Uh, you are making a huge difference. I know that it's really, really tough. I know the lockdown has been really really tough um, and and I just want to say that the conversations and the calls that I take every single day uh, with our NHS colleagues with our social care colleagues uh, as they they battle through uh, this uh, 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 this uh, coronavirus um, I know that they really appreciate all that you're doing because you're making their job uh, easier you're helping to ease the pressure on them on a day-to-day -day basis so really do remember that keep up the, the good work um, and keep keep making sure that we protect our NHS, our key social workers and social care, uh, and let's make sure that we continue to do all our bit that we can. So that's all uh, from us. I'm just checking on uh, my uh, my feed. Um, I think that's we've covered pretty much everything. But again, as I said, if there is anything um, that we haven't covered, please check back on our frequently asked questions, and we will try and make sure that every point is raised is answered. Uh, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.